In today's episode, we are going to talk about supplements, but actually we are going to talk about keto food. Mm -hmm. As you maybe know, uh, if you are following Grigos Keto on social media, we think that all the supplements that the industry wants you to buy are not necessary if you consume right types of food. And if you supplement yourself with micronutrients from foods that originally gave us the idea that humans can obtain, obtain vitamins, minerals and other micronutrients from food. We talk about keto food, keto friendly as food, always. and also carnivore food. For mm -hmm. example, as a carnivore, you don't need any supplement other than vitamin C, right? Definitely. So uh, you wouldn't go for vitamin C in the department of pills. You would rather take it naturally from yeah. a plant which uh, provides it most. So we're going to talk about vitamin C a little bit later, but let's go alphabetically. Mm -hmm. Let's start from vitamin A which could be uh, one of the most important vitamins. Well, all of them are important. They are essential vitamins and you have to understand that there are vitamins which you have to intake through nutrition. Mm -hmm. That's why there are many deficiencies in vegetarian and vegan diet because those vitamins and minerals in particular uh, are usually not uh, enough mm -hmm. or don't exist but, uh, at all. Before we're gonna start, we need to make something clear. We need to to divide actually which vitamins uh, we can find in uh, plant-based foods and which vitamins we can find in animal-based foods. And the list uh, when it comes to animal-based foods is really long and really short when it comes to plant-based foods. What I want to say is that uh, from the plant world, we can obtain only uh, vitamin C and vitamin E. Uh, when it comes to vitamin uh, A, D, uh, K1, K2, and of B course... B-complex. B-complex, exactly. Uh, in plant-based foods, maybe it's very minimum. So we need to mainly to base our keto nutrition, carnivore nutrition, always on fat meats, uh, fish, and eggs. Okay, and maybe some dairy from mm -hmm. goat and sheep. That's uh, what Grigos Keto always promotes. So let's talk about vitamin A. It, uh, vitamin AA plays a major role in growth, cell growth, uh, bone density, eyesight. It's really Development, cool. yeah. Uh, it's totally vital for children mm -hmm. and for uh, maintaining healthy uh, immune system. Mm -hmm. So vitamin A uh, we can find in uh, many animal-based foods. Mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely recommend meat. Uh, For but sure. In the in the seaside or in the uh, waters, uh, we would find it more. When it comes to vitamin A, we can find it mainly in fish, and we should. That's why Apollonas always says consume at least two times per week mm -hmm. fish. When it comes to vitamin A, we would go for salmon or other kind of fish that swims in cold water, exactly. so not so much Mediterranean. Uh, because we need to understand again that uh, it's 24 times more bioavailable in the animal-based uh, foods, uh, mm -hmm. the vitamin A. So when consuming vitamin A from plant-based, it's not the same. Uh, uh, the organism can absorb uh, the most uh, out of uh, vitamin A in animal-based foods. So we will definitely consume fish, salmon, mm -hmm. and those kinds of fishes that swim in the northern seas. But well caught, yeah. do not forget egg yolks. Egg yolks are abundant in vitamin A. And if you want a little bit more of vitamin A, I have here a nice bowl of beauties. Mm -hmm. Have a look. They're going to be in the frame many times again because they contain so many vitamins and so many minerals. They're quail eggs. As you know, Grigos Keto has so many recipes uh, for uh, uh, sweets, desserts, mayonnaise, and anything prepared with uh, quail eggs which can totally replace the hen eggs mm -hmm. for people who are allergic. Anti-inflammatory, yeah, and not anti-inflammatory, and I think it's a, a star food uh, for Grigos Keto, where uh, we came out actually with quail eggs uh, more than anyone, and uh, <laughs> uh, of course we have several others as uh, goat dairy, and we need to say that uh, fermented goat dairy, especially like feta cheese or and kefir sheep or sheep, yeah, they contain a lot of vitamin A and we so, need to keep consuming uh, these uh, precious foods actually, I would say. The whole quail egg has nutritional density, so it can replace two to three hen eggs when it mm -hmm. comes to 
comes to nutrients, we're talking about vitamins and minerals, which are totally, totally like these are like small bombs, and you should bombs, yeah. definitely give them a chance. Uh, welcome them in your kitchen. You don't need supplements, but you do mm -hmm. need some quail eggs. So fish, quail eggs, egg yolks, and uh, good bone broth. Bone broth. Okay. We're gonna talk about bone broth a little bit later. I have it here, as you can see. I have my bone broth here. Uh, I have my weekly <laughs> dose of bone stock, broth yeah. stock in the refrigerator. I do not like to freeze it, but if you have uh, a lot of work, if you are not at home, uh, every day and you have to have it ready then it's totally safe to freeze it we are preparing it on a weekly basis and then we are consuming daily as a soup or as an additive to some other keto dish so another great supplement mm -hmm. let's move to the essential vitamin D mm -hmm. so what could you tell us about yeah it? but before we're gonna enter for vitamin D I would uh, like to say because we talked about quail eggs that contain all the almost the, the B complex vitamins B1 B3 B6 uh, and of course B12 that B12 cannot be obtained from any plant-based food you need to keep consuming animal based foods in order to have B12 and this is really important because a lot of people have deficiencies they are turning uh, supplements uh, we're talking about supplementation uh, something synthetic something that we don't need uh, uh, mainly if I'm gonna ask somebody uh, what was made this uh, supplement that you consume he will not know and uh, it's really important to know that we can consume a B12 from quail eggs for example from another food that contains B12 and it's uh, from animal based and it's natural so we're gonna take the most out of it and now we're gonna enter uh, vitamin D Another uh, fat soluble vitamin which is really important for the immune system. Nothing can fortify a strong immune system like vitamin D in combination with vitamin A. Mm, that's a great combination. Mm -hmm. What I have here, homemade tallow. I'll tell you, nothing is richer in vitamin D than tallow. Of course, you can take it from butter, you can take it from ghee. Mm -hmm. Ghee is also very uh, abundant in uh, vitamin D, but if you make homemade tallow, you will make sure that is uh, first of all, affordable, and second of all, available to you throughout the year because it's very stable mm -hmm. room temperature or in the refrigerator, you can make let's say several uh, jars like this idea. And again, either uh, animal-based foods, again, vitamin D cannot be obtained for any plant-based food. We're talking about tallow, it comes, uh, of course, from the fat of uh, beef or veal. We're talking about Even butter. Mutton. Yeah, uh, we're it talking about it butter, it comes from goat, again, or cows, maybe if it's ghee or whatever. Uh, again, we're talking about vitamin D, it cannot be obtained from any plant-based food. So it's really important to understand that we have to keep consuming these uh, healthy foods in order to obtain all these great vitamins and minerals. There is a misconception that vitamin D uh, can be obtained only from milk. When it comes from cow's milk, it's not so helpful mm -hmm. because there are those um, inflammatory properties and caseins which will make cow's milk not so easy to digest. That's why if you will consume cheese, especially aged cheese of goat or sheep Fermented, or even yeah. buffalo milk, you will have a lot of vitamin D in your nutrition and you will not have to worry about supplementation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, give an emphasis to goat, sheep and buffalo dairy, fermented, of course. Mm -hmm. So, let's move. Uh, many Ketonians told us that we have beautiful skin. Thank you for that. Uh, I think one of the reasons for this is our nutrition. It's really rich in vitamin E and other great vitamins because we think that uh, when you are preparing a meal, you should consider what is what are your ingredients and what you're gonna consume on a daily basis and not uh, about so much about carbs and uh, fats and, mm -hmm. and protein. It's important to be in ketosis, of course your carbs have to be low, but first think about micronutrients. Micronutrients are more important than the macro. Mm -hmm. So vitamin E, it's vital and it's extremely important for uh, beauty of the skin, nails mm -hmm. and hair, but not only that, it plays a vital role 
in the production of red blood cells. So vitamin E can be found in some uh, animal-based mm -hmm. food, but it's more abundant in plant-based yes. food. So uh, we know that almonds and some other nuts have vitamin E, also sesame seeds mm -hmm. or uh, flax seeds. Generally oily stuff, yeah. But uh, we wouldn't recommend plant-based vitamin E to be your main source, even though mm -hmm. uh, you will find it more in plant world. Rosehip, for example, has a lot of vitamin E. Sure, yeah. Uh, Rosehip oil is in partic particular uh, rich in vitamin E. Vitamin E, very low. Uh, actually, it's the only part that it's uh, really low in uh, animal-based foods. But it can be obtained uh, generally from oils, like it's olive oil, like coconut oil, or like other oil-based uh, foods, like almonds, uh, maybe sesame. But uh, as I said, uh, we need to pay attention when we're consuming a lot of almonds, a lot of nuts generally, because they have a lot of oxalates, for example, almonds, or the side effects of them is we can stall if we want to lose weight. In plant-based world, there are two plants which are mm -hmm. extremely abundant in vitamin C, but also vitamin E. Here's one of them, the almighty sea buckthorn, and we're going to talk about sea buckthorn when we cover the subject of omegas, fatty acids. You want fatty berries, that's why you recommended olive oil. Exactly. But these fatty berries will provide you more vitamin E than any other berry. There's another cousin of, well, it's not really a cousin, but they are very similar when it comes to nutrients. Even they look alike, yeah. They look alike, it's rose hip. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sea buckthorn in some languages is called dog's thorn. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, rose hip is known as uh, dog's rose, fruit of dog's rose. Mm -hmm. So everything is connected to dogs in yeah. some way. Uh, rose hip also oil is extremely good for you. Mm -hmm. You can consume it both orally and uh, apply it on your skin. But ideally, you would have yourself rose hip tea or rose hip. Uh, and syrup. of course, when we're talking about uh, rose hip and uh, sea buckthorn, of course, the sea buckthorn says everything C. It's vitamin C, mm -hmm. and I think it's really important if we want to keep up. Uh, uh, our uh, vitamin C because again we said in the beginning vitamin C and vitamin E are uh, only in the plant-based foods really rich and we want for example C buckthorn because contains uh, more fat than carbohydrates contains omega-3 omega-6 omega-7 omega-9 really anti-inflammatory stuff that we want a lot of properties more unsaturated fats very want, low in sugar very mm -hmm. high in fats and we want something like this uh, because it doesn't have any uh, actually backfire in our uh, dieting. So vitamin E can be found in Keto Kitchen. Mm -hmm. There are other uh, things uh, which contain vitamin E. I would also recommend Cornelian cherry, mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't get confused. They are not cherries. Cornelian, this is a syrup I made of Cornelian, Cornelian berries or cherries. This autumn, if you cannot find that in your area where you live, then sea buckton can be bought online. And sea buckton is on mm -hmm. the throne of keto fruits. It's totally But it's uh, really funny when it comes to actually the dog's thorn, the dog's rose, and the mm -hmm. dog wood. Dog so, wood, yeah. Dog wood, yeah. Everything you can see that is uh, pretty much really? similar to when the carnivores cannot consume, uh, cannot find a prey to consume, uh, to eat something. They will, uh, actually the scientists and the people uh, realize that they, they were turned into these plants. These plants are really, really uh, nutritious and that's the reason you can even consume the leaves. Even we can make tea or even as uh, you can see here, the, the rose hip, you can dry it and make tea. In particular, sea buckton also can be dried and mm -hmm. then you can soak it in water and blend it it's extremely important to extract all the nutrients from the seeds because seeds contain a lot of oils, good oils, including vitamin E and other fat-soluble vitamins. But uh, this, what you said about dogs, it's actually related to people uh, observing nature and mm -hmm. behavior. Especially of some wolves, animals. yeah. Wolves used to go to see buckthorn. Uh, bushes and they would eat berries when they were not able to hunt. Mm -hmm. So this is telling us that this could be the only plant that carnivores occasionally should consume. Yeah, I think uh, somewhere here is uh, hidden the answer. Uh, 
uh, among these uh, plant-based foods uh, that we can obtain, what we really miss in carnivore diet, uh, like mm -hmm. vitamin C. I wouldn't say we miss, but uh, uh, if we want to, to keep uh, pushing, especially during the winter, uh, these uh, plants because uh, if you're gonna uh, see these plants growing during the winter in really low temperatures without problem it's uh, their natural state to be in a cold environment mm -hmm. now we are moving to another vitamin which is also essential mm -hmm. but predominantly can be found in animal based food but also you can find it in kale for example but we know that many people cannot have cruciferous vegetables mm -hmm and they're having problems to digest it. So uh, we are talking about vitamin K. Vitamin K can be found in abundance also in sea, sea buckthorn and uh, rose, hip. rose hip, but interestingly, rabbit meat mm -hmm. and wild game would provide you a lot of, with a lot of vitamin K, especially if you eat liver mm -hmm. of uh, ruminant animals. Exactly. For example, lamb liver also is Sheep, really yeah. abundant in vitamin K. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, prepare once per week a dish with wild game or internal organs such as uh, liver, heart, mm -hmm. lungs, and then you will have yourself... But uh, while uh, K is divided in two, it's K1 and K2. Mm -hmm. K1, uh, uh, actually K1 you can find both in animal-based and in plant-based foods. And this is all video about, I want to know, would like uh, me and Roberta to explain to you what's going on with these vitamins and why they're so important. But K2, it's only in the animal-based world. And it's really important because it helps the, the absorption of vitamin D. So K is, a, I would say, uh, helps uh, the organism to absorb much better the vitamin D, so plays another vital role and uh, we have here all the ingredients that we need besides the meat that is missing from our table at the moment. The uh, essence of meat is yes, in the bone broth, the bone because broth. when we are making bone mm -hmm. broth we are always boiling some meat together with the bones. So uh, our bone broth is richer than the classic yeah, 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 bone yeah. broth. Uh, let's move uh, to, well, people are mostly supplementing themselves with vitamin C, ascorbic acid. But mm -hmm. ascorbic acid is not whole vitamin no, C, No, right? it's a protective layer actually of, of the vitamin and mm -hmm. uh, all these uh, supplements, if you're gonna read them, contain uh, only the ascorbic acid, only the, this protective layer. Industrial supplements. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus they have a lot of additives, a lot of sweeteners, things that you don't want to consume. And why you should buy a supplement uh, to, which contains only the wrap of uh, real vitamin C that protects the vitamin C to be oxidated. You need vitamin C as it comes originally in nature. Nothing is richer than C buckthorn. C buckthorn will give you per 100 grams or mm -hmm. milliliters of 100% extracted juice, but the same goes for the fruit itself, will give you 225% uh, of your daily need for mm -hmm. vitamin C. So you need like a tablespoon or two tablespoons of this juice diluted in water and you got yourself all your daily need for vitamin C. When it comes to rose hip, it's uh, the plant where vitamin C was originally discovered. Thanks to rose hip, mm -hmm. many people during the Second World War, especially in the Britain, were able to uh, obtain enough of vitamin C because citruses were not available. Of course, lemon is really friendly and keto, but it will not give you not even as close vitamin C as C buckthorn. So think about these fatty berries. Here you can see we have a lot of pomegranate and you got mm -hmm. questions from your... Yeah. Uh, these are wild pomegranates and they are sour. Mm -hmm. They contain a lot of vitamin C, but be careful if you overeat them, you will overeat a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. So maybe... And it's good not to make juice because when you want to, would like to make a juice of them, you're gonna juice maybe three, four of them. Mm -hmm. So the fructose content is gonna go really up. You want uh, some sour variety, you don't want the sweet variety that is gonna actually keep you away from all this uh, sugary stuff and wouldn't let you actually to consume more because as uh, you can feel uh, when it, well, it's so sweet, it yeah, stops, stops you. you. Yeah, when already. it's really sweet, you want to consume a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and especially when it's a juice, you cannot stop. The best thing in pomegranate is hidden in those tough little uh, seeds, so mm -hmm. you want to eat whole seed of 
pomegranate. The same not with Sibatron, yeah. The same goes with Sibatron and rose hip. Let's move to the Vita. Uh -huh. Beta or vitamin B, there is a complex of vitamin B which mm -hmm. is essential. There is not only one, there is more of them. And some of them are totally non-existent in the plant world, mm -hmm. such as vi vitamin B12. B12 yeah. But let's start with vitamin B1. Mm -hmm. Vitamin B1 is important for maintaining healthy metabolism. Vitamin B1 is essential for proper digestion. If you want to digest food pro properly and if you want to uh, extract all the other vitamins from the food you are consuming, you need a lot of vitamin B1. And vitamin B1 is also uh, the one that takes care of the appetite. So mm -hmm. if your appetite is low or too high, something's going on with the vitamin B1. Uh, Where to find it? You can find it a lot in meat, in ruminant meat in particular, and also in internal organs. Mm -hmm. Eggs are also abundant, but I would definitely... We talked about it, we said that all the vitamins are packed eggs. here. Yeah, and uh, such as B12 that is really important and a lot of people keep consuming supplements. We don't want supplements, we want real food and quail eggs uh, or hen eggs maybe if they are uh, pasture-raised we want always pasture-raised food we don't want uh, commercial hens that they are uh, in a, uh, inside in the clove and uh, fed with uh, corn or generally gmo food let's move to vitamin b2 which is also important for digestion and the proper metabolism mm -hmm. of food but it's interesting that it supports normal vision and helps maintain healthy skin. The same like vitamin E, but this one is doing it in another yeah. way. It's also known as riboflavin. So, uh, the industry tries to, to sell us that uh, there are, especially B2, uh, hidden uh, uh, in abundance in uh, cereals, but this is not true. We know that we have uh, B2. And legumes. Uh, legumes. They usually uh -huh. say you have to eat yes. legumes for B2. Yes, but then you will eat it, a lot of other bad things. Mm -hmm, like starch, sugar generally. Uh, so we don't want this. We want to keep consuming animal-based foods, uh, kind of keep consuming dairy. Mm -hmm. rich actually complex B vitamins that we can find not only B2 but B1, B2, B3, B6, B9 like folate and B12 of course. And the number three, mm -hmm. B3, niacin, mm -hmm. what can you tell us about it? Okay, so uh, vitamin uh, B3 we know that can metabolize energy, give us uh, the boost that we need and as we know it as niacin and I think it's uh, also a component that we can consume through our uh, animal-based foods. I think really important, especially for the gym, especially for uh, active people. Uh, athletes, mm -hmm. extremely important for athletes because they could call it uh, energy vitamin. Mm -hmm. So again, I would go to uh, goat, sheep, uh, dairy, but also uh, lamb, veal, and rabbit, those meats which are easy to digest and will quickly provide you with energy including mm -hmm. vitamin b3 now we're moving to vitamin b5 and this vitamin is extremely important for those of you who have been uh, having troubles with high blood sugar you don't have to be mm -hmm. a diabetic but in, uh, in today's world, almost everybody who eats over its carbs could become a diabetic. So yeah, vitamin uh, B5 is mm. crucial for them. Yeah. Why? Because uh, it can regulate uh, the blood uh, sugar. So mm. I think it's really important. Pantothenic acid. Yeah. Level. It's called pantothenic acid. And uh, exactly, it's going to keep. Uh, uh, between the green lines that we, have, we want to have normal blood sugar. I think it's really important to keep consuming B5. Okay, so let's move to number six. As a person who exercises a lot, you would probably uh, find this one as your friend. It's helping you to metabolize protein, mm -hmm. build muscles. Exactly. Proteins build muscles. And also it's connected to uh, proper nerve function. So B6 could be one of those vitamins that you are missing if you have any kind of uh, pain or uh, conditions related to nerves. Let's jump to B9 or the folic acid, extremely important for the growth. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, pregnant women and babies are really in need 
of these essential vitamins. So, vitamin B9. Yeah, okay. Vitamin B9 is really important. We know folic it's called acid. folic acid or folate or philic acid. Uh, call it as uh, name it as you want. It's really important, especially for pregnant women, uh, for the fetus, because uh, we have proper development. They have to keep consuming uh, the women during their pregnancy a lot of folate. Maybe even the doctor is going to prescribe pills that we wouldn't suggest because we have a really good diet. I think ketogenic diet can help even the baby and the mother. Uh, of course, we can find it in, it's interestingly in avocados. I think this is a good source yes. of uh, folate. But uh, nothing like liver. Yes, yes, and I think liver is that. Lamb liver would be a great source of mm -hmm. folate. Also, dairy goat dairy in particular so even goat milk for a pregnant woman mm -hmm. is a great source of folate so let's move to the most controversial one so we are talking about b12 which does not exist mm -hmm. in plant world cannot be obtained from plant-based diet so you really have to consume meat internal organs organs dairy and eggs if you want to uh, maintain your perfect health mm -hmm. and if you want to intake enough of vitamin B12. Yeah, because it doesn't exist in any plant-based food and I think it's really important to understand that we cannot just keep pushing inside us plant-based uh, foods, just uh, something that is, uh, for example, avocado and broccoli and that's it, uh, I'm complete, you cannot, you need to have a, a balanced diet and when we're talking about balanced diet, we need to have and plant-based foods plus uh, animal-based foods. Uh, from all this big variety, we saw that it all works synergistically to keep our health in great level and of course have all these benefits of ketogenic diet being ketosis. Because while consuming only plants, we have really high carbohydrates, bloating, a lot of fiber. Yeah, maybe fiber is, uh, we don't count it on ketogenic diet, but uh, it's gonna have several side effects like constipation and bloating and I think it's really important to... I want to cover one subject which is very familiar to you if you are living in 21st century. So the word fortified. When something is fortified, it means that artificial uh, vitamins, minerals mm -hmm. and whatever you want to consume from normal food has been artificially added to those industrial over-processed foods. You do not want fortified anything. You want foods which originally have been providing us with great nutrients ever since the dawn of civilizations. So that's why we promote cooking, preparing everything at, at home. As you can see, I made tallow, I made my own bone broth. I, I didn't make seabacteran juice, but if I had dried seabacteran, as yeah. I usually have in Greece, I would even make that. Uh, syrups, uh, juices that you're gonna use for cooking because you're gonna be surprised. You can use a rose hip juice instead of tomato paste. So you can cook a nice uh, good uh, meat sauce or meatballs in red sauce with rose hip. You don't need tomatoes because you will have more vitamins and less sugar. And to finish it, uh, the subject of supplementation, usually you get the question, what about the probiotics? Mm -hmm. So in what terms do, does everybody need uh, probiotics or maybe just some of us? Uh, definitely some of us, we need probiotics and especially people that they fight uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome generally, problem with the gastrointestinal system, uh, uh, the microflora maybe is destroyed, uh, for example, with uh, long uh, years of uh, following a vegan or vegetarian diet, plant-based mainly. Uh, it's destroyed the microflora and we have to replenish it and we need uh, usually fermented food. Fermented food, I think it's a, it's a great solution for people that uh, uh, they want to replenish and uh, revive actually their uh, microflora so they have slowly to introduce uh, these foods uh, uh, to make them feel better. But for those of you who have been doing for a year or even six months proper keto mediterranean diet, you do not need uh, artificial or uh, pharmaceutical uh, products, probiotics, yeah. probiotics, you need some fermented veggies. We have a great recipe for fermented quail eggs, mm -hmm. there you're going to find eggs, a lot yeah. pickled eggs, exactly. You can even pickle meat, we will be publishing a recipe for this. Mm, that's going to be delicious. And uh, pickled vegetables, when you are choosing pickled vegetables, uh, have in mind that uh, even if vegetables originally contain sugar such as this, uh, sweet red peppers, 
they, uh, the product after fermenta fermentation will not contain sugar because all the good bacteria is going will to feed it, on it. Yeah. So your gut microflora will benefit from fermented mm -hmm. foods. You do not need uh, supplements or uh, probiotics unless your microflora is totally destroyed. Yeah. So that would be it for today. We hope we helped some of you. If you have any questions or if you would like to be in touch with Grigos Keto, uh, send us an, an email, a message, find, find us on social media. We are here on YouTube, but we are present also on Twitter, on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you like us, if you really like what we are promoting, then you can become one of our patrons and search for Grigos Keto at patreon.com. Patreon. Patreon, <laughs> As yeah. we like to call so it. So guys, stay ketonized to the full potential. And always stay positive. See you.